So today we're going to talk about, can a man over 40 fall in love? Ask these questions. And I think you're going to really appreciate the content I'm about to share with you. I originally was going to title this, how does a man fall in love? But I thought to myself, can a man fall in love is a much better question. Now, Really quickly, I just want to share with everyone, uh, just this past weekend, I was with a group of men. There was a total of nine of them. Of those nine, seven of them were in a relationship. One was a young millennial that has, um, he's on the spectrum, so he doesn't count in this category I'm talking about. Of these other seven men in the group, uh, they were all in a relationship, five of them married, and two of them in relatively seasoned relationships. And I'm sharing this from personal experience. These men um, are genuinely in love with their, their spouse, with their girlfriend. You can just see it in the way they actually shared how they felt about their relationship. And I'm gonna share something with you in just a little bit that will illustrate this point. But I was the only single guy there. And I'll be candid with you in full transparency. I am burnt out on the dating process. I am burnt out on swiping. It is, I am burnt out on boring conversations and the list goes on and on. If I'm being really honest, I want to bypass the dating process and go straight to a relationship. In fact, Forget that. I want to bypass the dating process. I want to bypass the relationship process. I want to go straight to being in love. <laughs> now, I'm laughing a little bit because I know how ridiculous that ridiculously that sounds. And yet, raise your hand if you feel the same way. Tell me, do you feel like you'd like to bypass the dating process and go straight into a relationship, straight to being in love? See, I learned something in my last relationship that I actually have the capacity to go all in. I have the capacity now to go all in. And yet I recognize for those of us in our 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s, that we have more challenges that we face versus some of our young underlings, our youngins that are in their 20s and 30s. See, we have something called life. And within that concept of life is something that's called baggage. We may not like the terminology, but the fact of the matter is we come to the table with a lot more stuff in our lives that makes it challenging to just meet and instantly fall in love with someone. Although those seem seems to be rare these days as well. So what's the rub? You want to be in a relationship and you want to, and you want to be in love. And yet we have to date, whether we like it or not, we have to date. We have to be seen by single eligible people. So how do we put the odds in our favor? Just like in the Hunger Games, may the odds forever be in your favor. How do we put the odds in our favor? In my own personal experience, I think it starts with a genuine self-examination of your own life. Look at your entire life, your relationship history. Look at the choices you've made along the way without pointing the finger at the other person. I mean, self-examination, 100% taking ownership for 100% of your experience when it comes to your past relationships. And ask yourself, do you see some patterns? Do you have a pattern of choosing a certain type of person? Now, it's quite possible that pattern is directly related to a childhood wound or adult trauma. And if you're not familiar with these two books I'm about to share with you, I highly recommend reading The Hoffman Process. The Hoffman Process, this is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and adult traumas. All the books I recommend are listed in the link below under Jonathan Recommend Books, but also the book Getting the Love You Want by Harville Hendricks and Helen Hunt. You will learn about something known as the Imago. I-M-A-G-O. I-M-A-G-O. And what that directly relates to is we oftentimes choose people 
similar to one of our both of our parents or caretakers growing up. Now, you might be going, well, Jonathan, how does this relate to can a man fall in love? Well, if you are doing the self-examination, if you're looking at your patterns and your choices, and if you aren't doing that, then I invite you to hire someone like myself. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. One of the things I do in my private coaching is we examine our past experiences and we create tools so we can attract a different set of circumstances going forward through, through um, discernment. One of my area of expertise is really helping people with discernment, but more importantly, with their intuition. So if you need some support with that, check out the links below. So coming back to the question, can a man fall in love? Well, I think it's important that the man do self-examination in his life or men to do that, to actually look at their own patterns, how they've chosen people, maybe even reading the books I recommend so they can, so they can start opening their heart more to love. Getting clear on the type of relationship that you want and, and, and certainly, and by the way, I'm gonna offer some questions in a moment that's really gonna help with this. So just stick with me for a few minutes. But when you get clear on the type of relationship you want, you establish your standards. Now, ladies, I can tell you, sometimes your standards are absolutely ridiculous in the wrong areas in the wrong areas. And I'm gonna share about seven standards that you may want to revisit your current standards because oftentimes it's, I'm five foot seven, I wear four inch heels, so I must be with a man who's six foot and over. If your whole relationship standard base is based on you wearing heels or whether or not he took you on a coffee date versus a dinner date or whether or not he ordered Built, you know, filtered water instead of bottled water on the date. If that is your standard, you are oftentimes shooting yourself in the foot. If your standard is he took you to Cheesecake Factory instead of a nice upscale restaurant, your standard is shooting yourself in the foot. We're going to talk about some standards that are far more important than the oftentimes trivial standards we see on TikTok repeatedly that's possibly even poisoning your way of approaching relationships. And you have to make effort with people in the world, whether it's a virtual effort, where it's, whether it's real world effort, we have to get physically seen to be asked on a date. So can a man fall in love? Well, as I said, he's got to do the same work as you. Otherwise he won't be prepared to know what love is. Folks, I'm going to offer what I believe is healthy love in just a moment. I want you to write this down. I'll repeat myself, okay? But this is what I believe is healthy love. See, coming back to the book, Getting the Love You Want by Harville Hendricks, Helen Hunt, or um, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller of the book Wired for Love, we oftentimes there's something known as love attachment style that is mistaken for genuine heart-centered love. When we attach ourselves to another human being in an unhealthy way, because healthy love is from, comes from a place of gratitude and unhealthy love is that jonesing for another person, jonesing for another person who doesn't really treat you that well. I want you to examine that in your past experiences. Have you been strung out by somebody and they weren't really that great of a partner? That's most likely unhealthy love versus healthy love. So let me tell you what healthy look, love looks like to me. And this is what the words I love you mean to me. It means I'm here. You matter. We are important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere and I only want you, okay? I'm here means I'm present to our experience. I'm present to our experience. 
I'm not thinking about the past relationships I'm in. I'm not looking on Instagram to replace you for the bigger, better deal. I am here. I'm present to you. You matter. That means your feelings are commensurate with my own feelings. Think about that. You matter. Your feelings are commensurate to my own feelings. I put your feelings at the same par as my own feelings. We are important. That means the relationship is a separate entity. And I'm going to treat it with respect, dignity, compassion, care, giving, and passion. But we'll talk about that in a second. We are important. I've got your back. Look, you need a ride at the airport at three in the morning because you're catching one of those early flights. I'm going to get in the car to take you there. You need something? I've got your back. I want you to think about that. I've got your back. That's such a powerful statement to know that you're in a relationship with someone who's going to be there for you when you need them. I'm not going anywhere. That means I'm committed. Look at, for better, for worse, rich or poor, sickness and health, I'm going to be there. I'm not going anywhere. I'm committed to this relationship. And lastly, I only want to be with, I only want you. That means, look, I might see a Playboy every now and again. <laughs> I might look at an Instagram every now and again, but I'm not looking to be with those women. And I was kidding about the Playboy, but because I don't even get that magazine anymore. But I only want you. You're the only person I want to jump in bed with and wrestle around and have fun and have juicy, delicious sex together. You're the only one I want from both my loins and from my heart. I'm here. You matter. We're important. I've got your back. I'm not going anywhere. And I only want you. That to me is what healthy love is all about. So when you're considering can a man fall in love, I want you to examine the following questions because the capacity to love is a function of emotional maturity. And more importantly, or equally importantly, is when someone has their act together. When someone, when the ground underneath a person isn't solid, it's very difficult for them to genuinely love another human being. We might do it from a dependent place but not from an interdependent place. And in just a minute, I will share, in a couple minutes, I will share you questions you should be asking early on in the dating process, maybe even before a first date. But some of the most important qualities of a relationship is first, identify, both people identifying what needs are most important to them in a relationship. The whole point of being in a relationship with another human being is that to you have a need and this other person is going to be a contributor to that need. For example, I have a need for closeness. I have a need for reciprocity. I have a need for trust. I have a need for respect. I have a need for physical intimacy and emotional intimacy. And I have a need for play. These are just a few of the needs that are so critically important in my life. And I invite you to write down those needs that are important for you in your life. I think another factor to consider is to know your strengths and weaknesses, to know your strengths and weaknesses and how this plays into a relationship we often call these roles, but to know what your strength is, to know what your weakness is. I think of my mother and father. My mother was a, a wonderful cook. My father took care of the bills. That was their roles in their relationship. They each knew their strength. They each knew their weaknesses. For example, I'll be candid with you. My weakness is I'm a terrible social planner. I would love to relinquish that role to someone else who's good at doing that because I'm a good follower in that case. If you want to plan a hike this Saturday, I'm up for it. If you want to go to the ballet, I'm up for it. You just make the arrangements. That's my weakness. My strength is developing the emotional component within a relationship. That happens to be a strength of mine. I invite you all to look at your strengths and your weaknesses and be cognizant of that in the early stage of dating. Certainly your capacity to be emotionally self-aware 
and to be able to handle, to be able to regulate your emotions when there, there's conflicts. That's a critically important skill to have in a relationship. And someone's capacity to love is going to be predicated on their capacity to resolve conflicts in a relationship. I think a factor we don't talk about, but money is energy. Money is energy. And money plays a role in relationships. So I think it's important to have healthy, honest conversation about money instead of the grand expectation that it's a man's role to cover everything, especially for those of us in midlife. Given that midlife, roughly 75% of, of single men and women out there are divorced, comes with divorce, alimony, child support. You know, a lot of financial factors play into the health of a relationship. And so I think having an awareness around money is rather critically important. Instead of being naive about this, I'm inviting you to think about these things even before you go on another date with somebody. Certainly someone's spiritual um capacity plays a role in, excuse me, someone's spirituality plays a role in how they love, in how they love and how they can be in relationship. Do you have a connection with something be greater than yourself? Do you, have some, do you have a connection with your higher self? Whatever that looks like for you, I think it plays an absolute role in someone's capacity, particularly for those of us in our 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s. And then I'm about to share this in a little more detail, but what does commit, we're going to talk about commitment plays a huge role in this factor. And more importantly, where does someone view their vision of their life? What's their direction of their life? Do two people have a shared vision? Do they have a shared understanding of commitment? And so, here are some critically important questions I invite you to ask of a man early on to determine if he can fall in love with somebody. Can he fall in love? First question, this is no particular order, okay? Do you want to build a life with somebody? Do you want to build a life with somebody? Do you want to build a life with somebody? And if, you, if the answer is yes, what does that look like? See, somebody could say yes, but then they don't, until you actually have to describe what that looks like, most of you know who follow me and watched enough of my videos, I always say the same thing. I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal or professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. I want to build a life with someone. I've created the blueprint. You are welcome to borrow my blueprint, okay? You go back and rewind this, do it at a slower speed and write it all down, okay? But I like to think that's a pretty good blueprint of what it looks like to build a life with somebody. The second, the next question, this is so, this is the most important question for a man if he can fall in love because this is, as uh, Rabbi Manus Freedom says, is the essence of what it is to be a man in relationship. And that is, do you want to take care of somebody? Do you want to take care of somebody? This question probably is going to turn off 90% of men from even wanting to explore a relationship with you because a significant percentage of men aren't really in the capacity to take care of someone or they don't want to do it. If a man doesn't want to take care of someone and if a woman doesn't want to, you know, a woman can't, it's not about financially taking care of. It's about, do you, do you, are you willing to go to the doctor's appointments with me when I'm getting older? Are you going to be by my side if I'm, you know, I'm going through chemotherapy? Are you going to wipe the vomit from my face? I learned this in my last significant relationship. What all in meant was for better, or for worse, I want to take care of someone. And what that looks like is going to be different. It's not always monetary. It can be emotionally, it can be physical. 
And the last question I invite you to ask a man going forward is what makes you think you're ready for commitment? <laughs> what makes you think you're ready for a commitment? If someone asked me that, it's because I've had three significant relationships. And in each relationship, I learned so much about myself and my capacity. But what makes me ready for commitment is I know I'm capable of going all in with somebody. I'm capable of going all in with somebody. And that's what makes me think I'm ready. And you have to ask all of these questions for yourself as well. Do you want to build a life with someone? What does that look like? Do you want to take care of someone? What does that look like? Or how does that look? And what makes you think you're ready for commitment? These are some critically important questions that will give you an indication if this man is even capable of fa falling in love. And why shouldn't we be asking this on a first, second, or third date? Why is everybody so afraid of deeper questions? Because here's the dilemma. You can get attached to someone who answers all of these questions wrong. All right? When I say the word wrong, not in alignment with you. And boy, when you've gone into a relationship like that, it's a real clusterfuck, in my opinion. There's a lot of sunk cost in there. And you can, when I mean the cluster, I said clusterfuck, what I really mean is the emotional bankruptcy that happens when you've given your heart to someone who isn't capable of falling in love. And I think I've given you a pretty fair outline. If a man over 40 can fall in love, the type of things you should be considering going forward. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. In fact, someone just posted it. Are they capable of falling in love? Ask these questions. Do you want to build a life with someone? What does that look like? Do you want to take care of someone? Not necessarily monetary. What, what makes you think you're ready for commitment? Are you capable of going all in? Thank you to our Facebook member for posting that. I certainly do appreciate that. Hey, if what I just shared sparked some curiosity or questions for you, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me, right there is a link to a discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. All the links below to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get all the books I recommend are listed below.